Hello and welcome again to this particular session. Question number fifth we have taken and this paper is from June 2019. And uh, this question is quite interesting one because here we will see a case where holding company is having more than one subsidiary company. And many a student were asking me to actually solve this particular question. So I have decided to solve it for you. Now just simply pay attention. In this particular question, and my only ardent request is to pull down your 2000, uh, sorry, June 2019 paper. So in case a paper is in front of or you, then you will be able to understand it better. So following are the balance sheet of the three companies given to us. One is A limited, B limited and C limited. <clears throat> and besides, in this particular question, we have been given equity share capital. All figures are rupees in lakhs, 50,000 lakhs. 15,000 lakhs, 4,500 lakhs, and one figure is rough, and face value of one share is 10. So that means 50,000 divided by 10, total 5,000 lakh number of shares of A limited, 15,000 divided by 10, 1,500 number of shares of B limited, and so on. Similarly, we have in this case general reserve and statement of profit and loss account balance of A limited, B limited, there is no general reserve balance of C limited, but there is balance in profit and loss account. Obviously, these are closing balances. Balance sheet closing date happens to be 31st of March 2019. Again, you need to pay attention to this particular aspect. And then we have been given non-current liabilities, 10% debentures. Some debentures have been issued by C limited. Correct. Similarly, loan from B limited is there. C limited must have taken loan from B limited. What will be the treatment? I will tell you later on. Don't worry. And then trade creditors. We will simply add all these three items and put it into the consolidated balance sheet, which we'll prepare later on. And similarly, bills payable only of C limited is given. Even 225, we will simply put in the consolidated balance sheet, which we are going to prepare later on. Then towards the asset side, non-current asset is given. Under non-current asset, fixed asset is given. Under fixed asset, tangible fixed asset. Simply add all these assets and put the figure in the consolidated balance sheet. Now, this is the area where you require a bit of what we call attention. On 1st of April 2018, A Limited has made some investment. Pay attention. A Limited is making some investment. A Limited purchased 900 lakhs equity share. 900 lakh equity shares of B Limited. And amount paid by A Limited is 13,500. Correct? Non-current investment. That means long-term investment. So A Limited has purchased 900 lakh equity shares in B Limited. And similarly, A Limited has purchased 360 lakh equity shares in C Limited. And amount paid is equal to 3,250. Also, A Limited has purchased 5 lakh 10% debenture, 5 lakh 10% debenture, 5 lakh is number of debenture. If you want to compute the value, multiply it with 100. Why? Because face value of debenture is always considered as 100. That means rupees 500 lakhs worth of debenture. So rupees 500 lakhs worth of 10% debenture in C limited we have purchased. But this is not going to make any impact because debenture never fetches any voting rights. But point is that we have invested in C Limited. That is the point which you need to understand. And we purchased these debentures for 490 lakhs. However, here in this particular case, we need to pay attention towards these two items. This time, A Limited has invested in B Limited and in C Limited. So first of all, let us analyze this. If we are going to analyze this, just pay attention here. Mm -hmm. or you I have to do lots of things say here first point let me explain first of all in this question closing date that is balance sheet date is given to us as a 31st of 3 2019 opening date is 1 4 2018 and we have just gone through this particular fact that a limited which is the holding company has invested 
on 1st of April 2018. So 1 4 2018, that is the beginning date. That is also your date of acquisition or date of control. So quite obviously, entire during the year period will be known as post acquisition period. Correct. Now let's come to the point. Our second step is to compute degree of control. In order to compute degree of control, because a limited has made some investment in B limited. First of all, I need to know the number of shares of B limited. Total share capital of B limited is rupees 15,000, which I just told you. And one share is of 10 each. So total number of shares of B limited are 1,500 lakhs. Out of that, 900 lakhs are in the hands of A limited. So A limited becomes your holding company because we are having more than 50% share. And obviously out of 1,500, 900 shares are in the hands of A limited. That means 600 shares are in the hands of the other shareholder known as minority interest or non-controlling interest holder. So as far as B limited is concerned, we can say ratio is 900 is to 600 or 3 is to 2. That means three-fifth control is exercised by A limited. In B limited, three-fifth control is in the hands of A limited and two-fifth control is in the hands of non-controlling interest holder, minority interest holder. Likewise, we will now take into account C. Total share capital of C is rupees 4,500 lakhs. One share is of rupees 10 each. So number of share happens to be 450 lakhs. 450 lakh worth of share of C limited are there. Out of 450 lakh share, we have just seen that A limited has acquired 360 lakh worth 360 shares. 360 lakh shares, correct? You leave lakhs, it will confuse you. 360 shares we acquired. So out of 450, 360 shares are in our hands. That means 90, 90 shares are in the hands of the other shareholder. So other shareholder will be known as non-controlling interest holder. That means in B limited, share of holding company is three-fifth and share of non-controlling interest is two-fifth. While in case of C, four-fifth control is in the hands of C limited or and sorry, one fifth control is in the hands of the non controlling interest holder. This is how you will have to analyze the things in this particular question. After having analyzed these points, now let's come back to the question. We have to make lots of shifting and reshifting here. Now let's come back to the questions. So we have analyzed this particular point. First of all, non current interest, correct? Now coming back to other area. Here it is given, next point, long-term loans and advances. Long-term loans and advances are written in the column of B limited. So B limited must have given some loan to C limited. Correct? Loan to C limited. B limited has given a loan of 180 lakhs to C limited. But if you will look into the liability side of C limited, C limited is claiming that we are having a loan of only this much, 150 lakhs. Actually, what would have had happened? B limited must have given a loan of 180 lakhs to C limited. But it could be a possibility that out of 180 lakh worth of loan, which C limited might have taken, they might have also paid us 30 lakhs, let us say by way of check. And somehow by the end of the current accounting year, let us say this check is not received by us. So that is why C limited is claiming that out of 180 minus 30, we are supposed to pay to B limited only 150 lakhs. Is it clear to you? Only 150 lakhs. And B limited is claiming that we are supposed to actually take 180 lakhs from you. Now, when the consolidation procedure will be done, so B limited will come to know the fact that C limited has already delivered a check to us, which is not received by us. So what they are going to do, first of all, they will receive the check. They will reduce the amount of the loan by 30. And they will also reflect that we have given you 150 lakh worth of loan. And then this check, they are going to add to what we call cash and cash equivalent. Later on in the consolidated balance sheet, when I will prepare later, I will write all these items and I will simply add check in transit 30. Similarly, I will add all these items, bills receivable, and if there is any adjustment, intercompany adjustment, I will add or subtract. Similarly, I will add all these items with respect to daters. If there is intercompany adjustment, I will subtract. And similarly, I will add all the items of the inventory. And if there is some adjustment, let us say with respect to unrealized profit, I am going to subtract it. And as far as loans is concerned, 
this loan will not appear in the consolidated balance sheet because B Limited now effectively has given 150 lakh to C Limited and in the books of C Limited they are all already having 150. So 150, 150 will get cancelled. It is appearing towards asset side, it is appearing towards liability side. So loan will not come in the balance sheet. Similarly, you can see here I told you 5 lakh debenture or rupees 500 lakhs worth of debenture had been purchased by A Limited. Actually, in this particular question, we have already seen that C Limited has issued some debenture earlier. See here, 2,250 lakh worth of debenture have been issued by C Limited. Out of this 2,250 2, lakhs worth of debenture, because these are rupees, 500 lakhs worth of debenture, rupees 500 lakhs worth of debenture have been purchased by actually A Limited. So 500 will be considered as intercompany transaction. When I will prepare the consolidated balance sheet, I will subtract from 2250, 500. And similarly, from this figure, 490, I will subtract 500. Actually, then you will say, sir, there will be negative item. It will not be negative item because we have purchased 500 lakhs worth of debenture. I am subtracting 500 from 500. How, however, there will be a profit to us because we purchased 500 lakhs worth of debenture by paying 490. So this profit will be added back to the consolidated PNL later on. We will write here profit on cancellation of the debenture. Point number one with respect to debenture in the consolidated balance sheet, I will subtract from 10% debenture in the liability side 2250 minus 500 intercompany transaction known as mutual debts. Similarly, from the asset side, I will subtract 490 minus 490. So nothing will appear towards the asset side as far as debentures are concerned. But and profit of 10, I will recognize in consolidated PNL. We know that investments are never shown in the consolidated balance sheet. Similarly, tangible, I said, all the tangible items I am simply going to add and reflect them in the new balance sheet. Similarly, I will add trade creditors and bills payable and simply put them in the consolidated balance sheet. Loan, I, I have already told you, will now not appear in the new balance sheet because it will get cancelled intercompany transaction. Deventure 2250 minus 500. And when we will prepare the consolidated balance sheet, all these items will not figure over there. We know that share capital of subsidiary company and reserves belonging to them never appear in the consolidated balance sheet. So when we start solving the question, you have to take care of two things. We have in this case two subsidiary company. So you need to note, note down their closing balances of general reserve. Correct. Fortunately, in this case, B Limited has general reserve and profit and loss account, but C Limited, fortunately, is not having general reserve balance, any closing balance, only profit or loss account balances there, 1125. Besides these balances, you need to note the opening balances. Now, it is clear that on 1st of April 2018, B Limited showed a balance of 5,100 in general reserve. As far as B Limited is concerned, as far as opening balances are concerned, general reserve opening balance of B Limited is 5,100 and, and a credit balance of 3,800 lakhs in profit and loss account. So this is the situation of B Limited as far as opening balances are concerned. However, as far as C Limited is concerned, C Limited is not having any general reserve balance, only profit and loss account balance. And it is written that on the same date, C Limited is having a debit balance of 540. So you are going to write here debit balance of 540, opening balance. So you have to note down opening balances and closing balances. This is the position of opening balance of B Limited. This is the position of balance of C Limited. Further, in this question, it is given that all the bills payable appearing in the books of C Limited. We have just gone through the question and we have seen actually that Bills payable in the books of C Limited are to the extent of 225. Now, question is telling that out of 225 worth of bills, which C Limited has issued in favor of B Limited. Obviously, these are bills payable for C Limited, but these are bills receivable for B Limited. Now, question later on is telling that out of these 225 bills, 20, 225 lakhs worth of bill, which C is claiming that it has to pay to B Limited, so B Limited, what B Limited has done out of total bills available with B Limited, B Limited has now discounted 65 lakh worth of bills, discounted 60 lakhs worth of bills. It means now out of 225 lakh worth of bill, 65 lakh worth of bills are in the hands of some other party, say bank. 
because B has already discounted these bills. Discounted means B must have got them in cash and obviously from banks. So now 65 lakh worth of bills are in the hands of the other party. This 65 lakh cannot be treated as intercompany transaction. Only such bills which, which each party are having and which each party are having in the sense means now out of 225 lakh worth of bills C limited has to give 65 lakh to the bank and remaining bills will be considered as intercompany transaction if I subtract 65 from 225 I will be left up with 160 lakhs that means now only 160 lakhs worth of bills are such ones available with the C which C limited has to give to B limited so when I will prepare later on consolidated balance sheet I will subtract 160 lakh because these are the bills which are is still C supposed which is still C limited is supposed to pay to B limited and 160 also I am going to subtract from what we call bills receivable so that is the only thing you have to do further it is given that c limited remitted 30 lakhs by means of check to b limited in part of the loan that was the point i was trying to tell you at that time b limited has given a loan of 180 but c limited has reflected this loan at 150 because c limited has already given us a check so c is not wrong so c is correct loan amount is 150 because out of 180 they have repaid 30 but now B limited will come to know the fact that C limited has remitted 30. They will subtract 30 from 180. Now 150 loan will be there. And this 30 will be added back to cash as I told you in the form of cash in transit. And this 150, 150 will get cancelled and loan amount will not appear in the new balance sheet. This is point number third. Point number four. A stock of B limited includes goods worth purchased by A limited for rupees 260 lakhs. B limited might have purchased some goods from A limited correct for 260 lakhs and which was owing also on 31st of March 2019 so B limited might have purchased these goods on credit so 260 lakh worth of amount B limited is still has to pay to A limited so it will be considered as intercompany transaction with respect to debtors and creditors and when we will prepare the consolidated balance sheet from the total of debtors and creditor I will subtract 260 260 number one and question is also telling that all these goods 260 lakh worth of goods are still in stock and further question tells that A limited invoice the goods at cost plus 30 percent at cost plus 30 percent means if cost is 100, margin is 30, selling price will be equal to 130. So rate of profit on selling price will be equal to 30 by 130 and remaining goods is equal to 260. So now whatever figure we'll, we will get, that will be known as unrealized profit. And because it is a downstream transaction, A Limited has sold the goods to subsidiary. So once we are going to subtract it from the inventory and of course well, also from consolidated profit and loss account. Is it clear to you? And further, it is given that on in August 2018, B Limited declared and distributed a dividend of 20% for the year ended 31st March 2018. Because this dividend has been paid for last year, it will be treated as pre-acquisition dividend. Total share capital of B Limited, as we have seen earlier, is 15,000 15, lakhs. And rate of dividend is 20%. So B Limited must have paid a dividend of 3,000 out of which H limited, A limited share because in company B, A limited is having 60% control, control. So 60% or three-fifth, whatever you may like to say. So three-fifth of 3,000, I think that is equal to 1,800. So our share is 1,800. First of all, it, it is a case of pre-acquisition dividend because dividend has been paid for last year. Treatment will be first treatment will be we will subtract it from opening balance of b limited we will subtract it from opening balance of b limited and then second treatment is holding company share holding company share of dividend will be subtracted from profit and loss account that is consolidated profit and loss account because holding company has taken their share of dividend to profit and loss account which is a wrong treatment because share of pre-acquisition dividend should not have been taken to profit and loss account it should have been taken to investment account so because it it is it has already been taken to profit and loss account so we we will have to subtract it now now from profit and loss account that means we will transfer it from profit and loss account and we will subtract it from investment account correct 
So this is the treatment we will have to go by with respect to pre-equation dividends. This is the entire question we, which we have already go, gone through. Note down the what we call closing balances and now I will show you the proper solution so that you can understand it now further. And don't ask for these sheets. I have told you these are not paper sheets. First of all, let, let me tell you, many of you feel actually as if these are paper sheets and it is difficult to download them because the moment if I will try to download things, and download the things, all figures automatically gets erased out. So that is the problem. Please note down if you want to, otherwise simply try to understand it. So first point, whenever we solve the question, we always do the analysis, analysis of accounting period, opening date, closing date, we note down, we note down the acquisition date, we take into account what is the post acquisition period, correct? So in this case, post acquisition period, entire what we call during the year period. As far as degree of control is concerned, I have already told you, correct? In B limited, we are having three-fifth control and non-controlling interest, two-fifth control. In C limited, we are, V means holding company, four-fifth and C limited, one-fifth control. Now we will do the analysis of reserve and surplus item. The reserve and surplus item, also known as other equity items. First of all, because we have two subsidiaries in, in this case, one is B limited, another one is C limited. So I will have to do the analysis of all the reserves of B limited and C limited. Now, first we've taken into account B limited. And in case of B limited, first of all, let's have a look over general reserve. Now, general reserve balance was, first of all, when we do the analysis, we write the closing balance. Closing balance is available in the column of B limited in the balance sheet 6,300. The opening balance I just told you is 5,100. The difference of these two tells that during the year amount which we have transferred to general reserve is 1200. So 1200 is post acquisition general reserve. Now coming over to profit or loss account of B limited. Closing balance given to us is 2400. Opening balance given to us is 3800. I just told you, first of all, the dividend will be subtracted from the opening balance. Dividend has been given by subsidiary company B Limited and the share capital of B Limited was 15,000. Rate of dividend was 20%. 20% 20 of 15,000 is 3,000. So net opening balance is now 800. Now you compare this net opening balance with what we call closing balance. So you will come to know that in the current year, subsidiary company must company subsidiary company B Limited must have earned a profit of 1,600. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir. So we have done the analysis of general reserve and profit or loss account of B limited. Now we come over to C limited. Fortunately, C limited is not having any general reserve. Correct? It is having only profit or loss account. First, we note down the closing balance, which is 1125. Then we take the opening balance, which is equal to minus 540. Opening balance is negative. In order to know how much profit subsidiary company must have earned, in the current accounting period, what I am going to do from the closing balance 1125, I am going to subtract opening balance. And if I would subtract, then I will get a figure of 1665. This is positive. So in the current period, subsidiary company C Limited must have earned 1665 worth of profit. Is it clear to you or not? Fine then. Then we come over to analysis table. Basic purpose of preparing the analysis table is to somehow get the figure of current assets, as net assets of subsidiary company on the date of acquisition. When I say we are preparing analysis table indirectly, what we are trying to do, we are trying to find out the equity balance. The equity always means net assets, net assets balance of subsidiary company on the date of acquisition. Is it clear to you? And for that, what we normally do, first of all, we write on the date of acquisition and we ask a question to ourselves, what is the share capital of subsidiary company? Because there are two subsidiary companies, first let me pick up B Limited. So, share capital of B Limited 15,000, it is given in the balance sheet, but this capital is at the end of the year. And so many times I have told you, whatever capital balance appearing in the balance sheet must be same amount on the beginning because capital hardly changes. So in the beginning of the year, that means on the date of acquisition, share capital of subsidiary company must be 15,000. Then what was the balance in reserve and surplus on the opening date? In respect of B Limited, 
profit and loss account balance in the beginning is 800 we just computed earlier 3800 was the balance after deducting 3000 dividend we will be left off with 800 and general reserve opening balance is 5100 so that means this 20900 what does this figure suggest it suggests the net assets of b limited on the date of control or on the date of acquisition is equal to 20900 and in the net assets of B limited on the date of control, I will say that holding company share three fifty will be equal to twelve thousand five hundred forty, and share of minority interest or non controlling interest will be equal to two fifth eight three six zero. Correct. Similarly, now we will compute on the date of acquisition the net assets of C limited. In order to compute the net assets, we compute the equity. Equity means share capital of subsidiary company and reserve and surplus balance. Now, profit and loss account balance of C Limited is negative 540. There is no general reserve balance. So, if I will add, I will get 3960. This shows the net assets of C Limited on the date of acquisition. So, on the date of acquisition, C Limited is having 3960 worth of what we call amount of net assets. Out of 3960, remember one thing. In C Limited, your control is 80%. That is 4 fifth. So, 4 fifth of 3960 is equal to 3168. And control of minority interest is 20% or 1 fifth. So, 1 fifth of 3960 will be equal to 720. So, now you have found out your share, parent share in the subsidiary on the date of acquisition in net assets. Along with that, we have also computed post acquisition profit. Now, just a moment ago, we did the analysis of general reserve and profit and loss account of B Limited. In the current year, amount transferred to general reserve was 1,200. By subtracting opening balance from closing balance, we got 1,200 here we did. Correct? This is general reserve, 1,200 post acquisition and post post equation profit or loss account is 1600 or b limited this is exactly what i have written here 1200 and 1600 post acquisition profit that is general reserve and profit and loss account out of this post acquisition profit holding company share is 720 and minority share or non controlling interest share is 480 that is 3 is to 2 similarly as far as post acquisition profits are concerned Share of holding company A Limited is 960 and share of uh, non-controlling interest will be equal to 640, 3 fifth and 2 fifth. As far as post acquisition general reserve of subsidiary company is concerned that are nil because a subsidiary company is not having any general reserve. However, their post acquisition profit which we just computed here 1665 by subtracting from closing balance the opening balance we got the figure of 1665 this reflects the amount of post acquisition profits earned by subsidiary company c limited and out of that our share out of that our share our share means holding company share is 80 percent or four fifth so four fifth of 1665 will be equal to 1332 and one fifth share will be equal to 333 so now we have computed everything all we have to do is to find out cost of control in order to find out cost of control what we normally do we simply compare the investment and our share or our share in the net assets on the date of acquisition for example in case of b limited first of all let me check how much investment i have made i have made an investment of 13500 share in order to purchase 900 lakh share we paid an amount of 13500 that is given under non current asset 13500 now in this case because subsidiary company has given a dividend and that dividend should have been credited to profit and loss account but you credited it to profit and loss account so now you will credit credit means you will subtract it from investment account so dividend share has been subtracted Total dividend paid by subsidiary company is 3000, subsidiary company B Limited. And in B Limited, your share is 60%. So 60% of 3000 will be equal to 1800. So you will subtract 1800, your net investment is 11700. In company C, you have acquired 360 lakh shares and you have made or you have paid an amount of 3250. This is the investments. Now, 
you have made an investment of 11,700 in B Limited and we have just computed share in net assets on the date of acquisition in B Limited is 12,540. This is what we computed here, 12,540. Total net assets of B Limited on the date of acquisition is 20,900. Your share is 12,540. So you will subtract it and you will get capital reserve because share in net assets is higher in comparison to consideration. Similarly, as far as C Limited is concerned, your consideration is 3,250, that is investment. But your share in C Limited, see net assets of C Limited on the date of acquisition is equal to 3,960. And your share is 3168. So you are going to subtract 3168. Here you will get goodwill because the amount of investment is more than what you are getting in the share. So that is how you will compute capital reserve. You can show capital reserve under reserve in surplus and you can show goodwill as intangible asset or you can also simply show net capital reserve because the amount of capital reserve is higher in the consolidated balance sheet. Now we come to minority interest or non-controlling interest holder. Because in this case, there are two companies. First of all, we compute on the date of acquisition. What, what is the amount of non-controlling interest holders? See, in B Limited, on the date of acquisition, total net assets of B Limited 20,900 and share of NCI is 8360. First of all, you write that on the date of acquisition, 8360 is your non-controlling interest. And then whatever profits B Limited earned, in the post acquisition period, your share, you simply add it. For example, we have just computed that post acquisition general reserve of B limited is 1200 and NCI share is 480. So I will add here 480. Post acquisition share, I will add 480. Similarly, I'm going to add my share in post acquisition profit. So by adding it, the non-controlling interest amount with respect to company B will be 9480. Similarly, First of all, on the date of acquisition, what is the minority interest in C Limited? On the date of acquisition means on the date of acquisition, C Limited was having total net assets of 3960 and NCI share is 720. So that means NCI interest on the date of acquisition is 792. And then whatever profit subsidiary company C Limited earned, during the year, out of that, your share is 333. You are going to add it. So your amount will be this much. By adding these two figures, you will get the total amount of non-controlling interest, which you will reflect it in the balance sheet. As far as preparation of balance sheet is concerned, very simple. Equity share capital only of A Limited will come in the balance sheet. Subsidiary company B and C Limited share capital will not find place. Now, we will write reserve and surplus. While explaining the question, I also told you that in consolidated balance sheet, we never write share capital of subsidiary company and reserve and surplus of subsidiary company. So when I will write here reserve and surplus, I will take into account the balance of profit and loss account of parent only. So first, as per the balance sheet, A Limited's profit and loss account is 17,000. Basically, it is consolidated P&L we are preparing. I will subtract the amount of dividend. I told you as far as dividend treatment is concerned, First of all, total dividend will be subtracted from the opening balance, number one. Then share of dividend of holding company will be subtracted from profit and loss account and will also be subtracted from investment. So we will subtract it from consolidated profit and loss account. Now, share of share of holding company in the post acquisition profits of B Limited is 960. Whatever profit earned by B Limited in the post equation period, our share in it is 960 we have computed. Similarly, whatever profit subsidiary company earned in the during the year period, our share is 1332. Just to make the point clear, just to make the point clear, see here, this is the situation of post equation profit. Profit and loss account of B limited is 1600, our share is 960. So I have added it. And similarly, post equation profit of C Limited is 1665 and our share is 1332 and we have added it. Similarly, when I will compute the general reserve, I will add 720. Now, this is consolidated PL we are preparing in the balance sheet, 17,000 minus dividend plus our share in the post equation profit and we will subtract the unrealized profit. 
and we, I will add the profit on debenture cancellation. As I told you, 500 lakhs worth of debentures were purchased by me for only 490. So now I will recognize that dividend because dividend amount is now cancelled. So total amount of profit and loss account which will appear in the balance sheet will be equal to 17,432. Similarly, you will write the consolidated general reserve. You will write the pair A limited general reserve which is appearing in the balance sheet. Now, post acquisition share in general reserve of B limited. Because C limited is not having any post acquisition general reserve, you are simply going to add 720. Total general reserve which will appear in the balance sheet will be equal to 62720. Capital reserve 840 I have shown, so I will show goodwill later on. Minority interest I have already computed, 10% debenture I told you. I have written here net figure actually. I have told you whatever figure is given in the balance sheet, you will subtract 500 from it. Similarly, trade creditor. You will add all the trade creditor which is given to you. And from there, you will subtract 260 because there was a transaction related to intercompany transaction with respect to debtors and creditor. So you will add all the items of the trade creditor and subtract 260, the net figure you will get this month. Correct? Now, as far as bills payable is concerned, total bills payable in the liability side is 225, 225. An intercompany transaction is 160. So 225 minus 160, you will subtract and you will get this figure. And towards the asset side, Simply add the tangible fixed asset and then don't forget to write goodwill. Then you have been given four current assets also. You simply add all those assets. But at the same time, when you will write the inventory, for example, I will simply show it in this manner to you because just wait. Come back to the question. So these are the four items as I was talking about at that particular time. I will add all the amount of the inventory and I will compute the unrealized profit. What was the amount of unrealized profit? I have forgotten 260 into 30 by 130. How much it will be equal to? Let me compute. That will be equal to 260 into 30 divided by 130. That is 60. So 60, you are going to subtract as unrealized profit. That means you are going to add all these items, subtract unrealized profit of 60 and write the net figure. Trade daters, you add all these items. There is intercompany transaction with respect to uh, 260. So you will subtract. Bills receivable, add all the item. Intercompany transaction is 160. Cash and cash equivalent, add all the items and don't forget to add check in transit 30. Similarly, when you will write bills payable, write 225 less intercompany transaction, then write the net figure. Trade creditor, add all the items, deduct intercompany transaction 160 with respect to data's creator, I told you. Then loan amount will not appear in the balance sheet, I have already told you. 10% debenture, 2250 minus 500, write the net figure, which I have written 1750. And this is the amount of general reserve wherein we did some what we call adjustment to general reserve and profit and loss account. I have already shown you and equity share capital. This is how we have to do such questions in case if such questions strike in the examination. You cannot expect such question to strike in the examination, especially if you are having a new course. Remember one thing. Among those who are watching these videos, if you have new course, kindly, kindly wait for a day or two. Then I will start what we call uh, model paper analysis series. I will solve the model paper recent, recently issued by the what we call institute. So those paper will hold you in a good state because basically these sessions are primary primarily for students who are having who are having 2016 course. Is it clear to you? And any anyone among you having new course, kindly do not attempt. Do not attempt any single paper, any single past paper. It will hamper your studies otherwise. Correct? Simply attend the simply attempt what we call your model paper series. So these are the points. And uh, uh, on such count, we take leave of you as far as today's session is concerned. Shall meet you in the next session then.